your team is like a, how do you say that? A, a heated mess. So how mad was your mom when she named you? Like you have a flu in Los Angeles. How did you even get in the movies? They were looking for a German rebel Wilson. How did Suicide Squads happen? Because that's a huge film and it feels like it's got like every star and then some in it. It's gonna be different from any superhero movie ever made. Very exciting, I cannot believe I'm in it, Carlos. We need a comedy tour with you, Reggie Watts, and Kathy Griffin. I love all of them. I'm gonna do what I call rapid fire. What, 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 I'm ready, I'm ready. Hey family, guten tag, and welcome to another edition of The Carlos Watson Show. Now today we head to Germany and back. Gonna introduce you to German DJ, musician, and YouTube personality who's officially turned big screen star. Full aboard, found fame online thanks to his comedic vlogs, his music venues, even his celebrity interviews. Now he's turned that brush with internet fame into one hell of a career, appearing in starring roles in movies like Pitch Perfect 2, Buddy Moon, and one of the biggest films of the summer. That's right, I'm talking about The Suicide Squad. For more, this is my guy. This is Flew Aboard. The Carlos Watson Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Hey, Flula. Hi, Carlos. How are you? Good, good. Did I, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah, Flula, like you have a flu in Los Angeles. That's right. <laughs> so, so, so how mad was your mom when she named you? What, what made her name you Flula? Oh, man, hippie times. These are hippies. These are hippies, Carlos. It's just hippies. You guys are down to the socks. Even the socks and the Birkenstocks. You know, oh, the rules and regulations. Although, yes. you, know, you know what? Um, as they used to say in a different scenario, God has a special place in heaven for German hippies because German hippies are a special breed. They go all the way. They don't hold back. No, yeah. There's no right. 50%. There's 100%. <laughs> right. And listen, if you want socks and sandals, just peep my Instagram, Carlos. Two days ago, very bold socks and Birkenstocks. Right. Right. And where, where in Germany did you grow up, Flula? Yeah, I grew up in a small town outside of Nuremberg, Nuremberg. Now, I love basketball, so now are you a basketball fan or no? I'm a very big basketball fan. Now, who is your team? Have you followed the Germans to these shores? Did you follow a Nowitzki or a Detlef Schrempf or maybe some of the others? Man, you are music. Carlos, these are musical yeah. sounds yeah. to my ears. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Uh, Detlef was... I think our first real star, yeah. I mean, he was six man of the year, played every, you know, Sonics, I think Mavericks a little bit, uh, but definitely Pacers. He was nasty in the best way. Yes, had the yes. worst slash best haircut. <laughs> he did, oh, he did. I that was this. a crazy I, haircut. Oh man, yeah. just a flat top that should not be a flat <laughs> right. or a top. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, I loved him. And then Dirk, of course. Dirk, Dirk. I have met Dirk many times now and he's my hero because he's like not trying to be super cool. He's just a very wonderful person. Meet your team. It's okay, I'm not okay. Each member is chosen for his or her own completely unique set of abilities. All right, now, Lou, Lou, tell me a little bit about Suicide Squads. How did, how did you even get in the movies? The first one was I did get very lucky. I um, There is a film called Pitch Perfect 2, and uh, this is a film uh, that was having a German team, and they were trying to find uh, an opposite for There's a role in the first film played by Rebel Wilson. And so they were looking for a German rebel Wilson so they could have like a, like a, you know, a contention or something. When the Bellas hit the stage, we are going to blow minds. Was what? More of Flabby Abby's baby shoot? That's not my name. I don't know your name. Could be anything. Obese Denise, Inflexible Tina, Lazy Susan. My mama is to fat Amy when I eat krauts like you for lunch. And I guess they couldn't find someone they thought was the right fit. And someone in the pitch, per like the music department was like, hey, have you guys seen this man from this YouTube video? 
and I had uploaded something about pooping at parties. I thought that was a very strange party poop. Was a very confusing <laughs> phrase, Carlos. I still don't understand why you would do it. Oh, I tell you, Jennifer, she is she is really a party pooper. Really, Jennifer poops at parties. I poop at parties, but people don't know because I close the door. Jennifer goes to the party and then poops. Right. And so they were like, oh, he's made this video. Maybe audition him. Who knows? So I auditioned for a lady part uh, for Pitch Perfect 2. And then I got the part. I could not believe it. Still, I have very difficulty connecting reality with, like, I don't, this is a different person to me. So it's very exciting. But that's what happened. Nice. And then how did Suicide Squads happen? Because that's a huge film and it, fe it feels like it's got like every star and then some in it. I got it because uh, I, they just auditioned me for a, a, this, it was a secret part. I think all of these films, they don't want to tell you what is happening for comic book films. So I received one, I think I was like auditioning for some man like Sledgehammer or something. So I just did this and I played around. I had fun with it. I think when I'm like, you know, there's like some analogy about holding sand too tight. It doesn't become a diamond. It just goes onto the ground and now you have sand on the ground. So just like be loosey goosey. So I was, I was just loosey goosey. And then uh, I got a call like three weeks later that I'm not playing Sledgehammer, but playing Javelin. That's the name of my character. Very exciting. I cannot believe I'm in it, Carlos. Everyone is exploding, genitals, heads, arms, legs. It's like a big, massive graphic novel brought to life. This is by far the biggest movie I've ever made. And who did you enjoy meeting the most? Because who's in that? Joel Kinnaman's in that? Is Idris Elba in that? Uh, yes. Margot Robbie's in that? Viola Davis is in that? Man, I mean, it is just like an all-stars team. It's just the most sassy uh, people you can imagine. John Cena as well. Oh, nice. Oh, it's so great. I will say the most favorite, I think, was the writer and director James Gunn, who people will know if they've seen his Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 are, are two of his very largest films. Um, part 3 is coming out soon, Volume 3. And then also, yes, The Suicide Squad. So I was very excited to meet him because I feel like his brain is just very fascinating. You know, it's like I would love to just have like a Lego replica of James Gunn's brain so I could just go in there and try to understand it more. But anyway, I love him. He's so great. Our home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Ensure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Now, Flula, what did your parents do? Were they were they in entertainment or comedy in any way? None of those things. Uh, they were uh, teachers and engineers is mainly uh, my, my background. Um, I was uh, the weird one, probably, like in the Sesame, Sesame Street. You know, those four things, like three men are playing hopscotch and I'm just eating hamburgers. I was the hamburger man. Yeah. And so I enjoyed to, like, beatbox as a child. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And do weird uh, Schuhplattler German dancing. And then this just became more things that my brain uh, did really enjoy. So that's what that's what happened. Now, why do you think that is? Do you think that was nature? Do you think it was nurtured? Did you have an older sibling? Yeah, I think part of this was uh, was as was uh, nurture because I have no siblings. And so the environment was me and then also me. So I was, who will entertain me today? Oh, I, Flula, will entertain you today. Um, so, so that's what occurred. And I did this uh, all many hours uh, of the day. And that was very fun for me. And then other people started to enjoy it. So I was like, oh, maybe I will just do more. Now, when did you think that this could actually be a profession? We have a, a very uh, regimented um, culture in many ways. And many of the artists I know in Germany is frustration sometimes because in like Los Angeles where I am now, there are no, it's not so many rules. You just do a thing, but that's why I'm here. <laughs> is I think it was very good for me to be exposed to this and also to be different. You know, there's not too many flulas. I mean, two people have named a dog and there's a goldfish someone texted me. So, you know, it's helpful to be a little bit unique like this. So what was your big break uh, on the uh, on the entertainment side? Because because I, I am always curious about how people go from this is something that I love, this is something that I'm doing for fun, to you know, this is how I'm gonna pay my rent, this is how I'm gonna actually thrive and survive. I accidentally won a hype man contest. 
um, some years ago, um, where I didn't know what a hype man was, <laughs> but I thought I should enter this because in the worst of cases, I will be in the beginning like an American Idol where they show all of the like <laughs> not <laughs> good people. <laughs> and because I, call it, I did not know the rules of hype man or yeah, what yeah. is a hype man or what yeah. is good, I think this was my benefit. It's like sometimes, you know, that the idiot is winning because he doesn't understand anything. And it's not like I was not thrown off of something because I didn't know what was being thrown. I was like, what? Okay, yeah. And so that was my first thing was like, oh, maybe perhaps this is a good idea to pursue. You know what? Hype Man has a special place in this world. You know, obviously Muhammad Ali's hype man, Bundini Brown, was arguably the first famous, but you know, in rap music, there are lots of hype men or people who played the role of, uh, of hype men. So that is a very honored, uh, that's a very honored spot. Oh man, well, I, I love hip hop and I grew up in a time where I was listening to lots of, I think, Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, everyone says their age was the golden age, but I believe like late 80s, early 90s was just when so much dopeness was occurring. So I didn't understand what is a hype man. I was just like, oh, oh, really? A rap break on CNC Music Factory? Thank you very much. I will take it. Here is the goal. Back with the bass, pajamas live in effect, and I don't waste time on the mic with a dope rhyme. Jump to the rhythm, jump, jump to the rhythm, jump. CNC Music Factory is a very German hip hop track. I could see that that did well everywhere, but I could see it doing well in those kind of Berlin nightclubs. I could see it. Absolutely. You know, we are, I, I know it's began many places, but we have like this industrial techno. Yes. Um, there's a song called James Brown is Dead. Um, and he was not when they wrote this, he was in great health. But it, it goes really hard. James Brown is dead. Uh, and this is was so popular in Germany. And so CNC Music Factory also has this very like hardcore dancing. But then there's still like the nice rap breaks, the deep voice, you'll pause, take a breath and go for yours. I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> it's like married this to in sassy ways. Who, who helps you the most, Flula? Who have been, I always say surround yourself with angels. Sometimes people use the word allies. Who has helped you dream fearlessly? Who's helped you be your creative and your boldest self? I will say always most important is your own identity, your healthy voice, because that one is who you are carrying with you always. So I, I'm trying to feed this voice some, some more calories so he gets big and strong and he can uh, help the other guy be a little more quiet. But in the, in the industry, I mean, for me, Conan O'Brien is someone that uh, we have become friends in the last years. and. It's been very helpful to watch. I, I have, he's brought me on tour and done some very wonderful things for me. But when I was with Conan, I was right there just so I can watch what is he doing? Why is he doing this? What, what is he thinking right here? And you can see how a genius like this performs and all of the emotional intelligence that's required to do these things. Talent is not enough. Um, and so many people are talented. It's this emotional IQ that keeps people going and being healthy to themselves. Now, have you done musical performances as well? Is uh, comedy and uh, acting? Yes, I mean, I will, yeah, I call it, so my, my comedy is accidental. I don't understand what is funny and what is not. I just assume if you enjoy it, perfect. Here are more servings of Flula for you. Uh, it's all you can eat buffet style. Dance with my opa. Dance with my dinner. Dance with some poodles. But I enjoy music also very much. I'm a techno DJ and I like to make songs. <laughs> I started to make songs in my automobile called Auto Tunes. Um, and this is before Carpool Karaoke with James Corden. I would meet people and I would record live songs in my automobile uh, just to perform with them as a way to experiment with sound and dopeness. I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> Mama said knock you out. My most fun one, I will tell you, was I one time I tweeted Sir Mix a lot. And he responded with a tweet and said, yes, you can record um, Baby Got Back With Me, but you must insert a dubstep drop, please. 
And so I did this. I drove to his house. Uh, he just got into my automobile and we performed this song. A highlight of my life, I must tell you. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake that big old ass, baby got Man. Yeah. How the f you find me anyway? Oh, I, I dialed one nine hundred mix a lot. What I now, how often do you go back to Germany these days? Do you go back to Germany at all, or no? Because of the pandemic, no. But I go uh, one or two times a year. Um, I need it because I need the very sad weather. I need the fog, <laughs> and then just we have a German word called called a duster, which is like, oh, it's dark and foggy, and maybe a horror film is being filmed, you know. Um, and I need this. This is my oxygen, you know. I, I live in Los Angeles where it's always sunny, happy, haha. I hate this. Um, I, I need some darkness. Most beautiful place you've ever been to, Flula. Where's the most beautiful place you've ever been to in the world? I will change this in 14 minutes, just so you know. So this is not my most beautiful. This is just currently. It's the Garmisch Hartnach Klamm, which is a very pretty place in Garmisch Partenkirchen in Germany, south of Munich, uh, near to the Austrian border. Now, now, are you an Airbnb guy? You a hotel guy? What do you do when you travel? I like to, uh, I do enjoy the Airbnbs. and Bs. I like this because you are always like a little more private. Now, where would you like to go that you haven't gone yet? Oh man, I've never been to New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. I've never been there. Yeah. I've never been to Australia. I would very yeah. much love to that, that section of the world. And then much of Asia, I've not seen. I've been only to Taiwan. This part of the world uh, it would be very exciting to me. On the questions of race, obviously the last year has been a big year in terms of racial conversation Ooh. here in the United States. Um, it, it always is, but last the last year a big one. What, if anything, do you see? Well, every every country has its own issues and challenges. And Germany, I mean, you cannot think of a country with a, a darker 20th century or world history. Uh, you know, the, it, Germany, it's, it's a very, you know, we have struggled with all kinds of, of race, you know, atrocities. I mean, just some of the, the worst things you can imagine. For America, um, I think what happened last year was that conversations that needed, that finally were beginning. This is like, yeah, we should, this should be, talk, have been talked about decades and decades and centuries before. So in a way, I think it is very helpful um, that, that these things are now being discussed more and more openly. And I very much hope that social media, which has become this like, say the craziest things and that's what wins the day. <laughs> I hope this goes away and we can return to just some sensible things, nuance. This is a thing that exists. Hey, Fula, finally, uh, where would you love to be a decade from now? Oh man, well, uh, globally, I hope uh, that we uh, start really connecting to real issues uh, like social justice, racial justice, global, climate change. I hope that we are moving forward in these ways that that would make me very happy. I hope that I, I would honestly love to achieve some more success and money because I think with these things I can do more things. Uh, and this would be very exciting. I made a show once called Flulanthropy, which is just uh, Flula Philanthropy because I was like, I, the, gay, the idea was like, I am Flula, I am always into myself, but one day a week I'm helping others, was the idea. So I would love to really just continue this idea of Flulanthropy, but really help more people. It's, it's the most exciting thing. It's the most simple thing that makes me feel great. We need a comedy tour with you, Reggie Watts, and Kathy Griffin. Oh man, I love all of them. And Reggie <laughs> is my, he is one of my heroes, Carlos. So well, I'm gonna try, and you're gonna be familiar with this because of what uh, your sports fandom. I'm gonna do uh, what I call rapid fire. I'm gonna hit you with a few questions. What, 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 I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, who's your favorite comedian of all time? Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell, what's your best dance move? Oh man, I remember the moment when I learned the running man, Carlos. Oh, so, nice, nice. Ooh, no, you got no, me my feelings right yeah. now. Yeah, I'm about to get up and start doing the running man. I won't do it with you. I won't. Okay. I can <laughs> run and sprint and I can do jogging man. I can do uh, speed walking man. I can do any speed. All right, what's your karaoke song? Oh, right now it's uh, So Fresh, Karma, So Clean by Outkast. Nice, very nice. Okay, your favorite movie of all time. 
This will change in two minutes because my brain works like this. And right. Die Hard, the original. Hans Gruber, greatest villain of all times. A wonderful movie. Give me the code. But I'm telling you, you're just going to have to kill me. Okay. If you could have dinner with anyone, anyone in this world, dead or alive, who would you love to have dinner with? Who would you love to meet? Oh man, I would, oh, there's too many. I would love a uh, Benjamin Franklin. I think this man just invented too many things for one human being. And then who invented like pizza? Was it one man, one woman? Who, who are the inventors of pizza? <laughs> I want to talk to you about it. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Who gets yeah. credit and who actually did it? I bet you it's yes. two different people. I bet, yeah, I bet exactly. you I bet you it's two different people. Hey, Flula, thank you. Thank you for joining me on the show. And I hope I actually get to meet you in person, maybe at a basketball game one day. Maybe we'll go to a game together. Oh, man, I would love this. Okay. Take Bye. care, my friend. Okay. You Bye -bye. too. I've been a fan of Flula's since uh, since he was talking about pooping at parties. <laughs> I love it. He did a whole series of videos about uh, idioms, you know, he did proof in the pudding, party poopers, um, some other ones that might not be appropriate to say. Uh, <laughs> hilarious. And such a good, like such a fun, like skewering of the English language, right? right? I thought it was very interesting how he wanted a Lego uh, replica of who was the uh, the director's mind. James Gunn. That's amazing. Yes. Just yeah. to think about that, because yeah. this is yeah. what you do right. yeah. for us is excavate an anthropological study of a person's like history. Amazing. Yeah. I even enjoyed the sports parts, and, and oh, the, reason, the reason why is there was an international angle to it. I, I will tell you that when I've traveled internationally, the, the best friendships I've met have often come from me desperately looking for a basketball court in Iceland <laughs> or Tanzania <laughs> or what have you. And the folks who are there on a musty hot day when no one else is there in Vietnam and in, in Brazil and other places are people who will end up inviting you for a drink or a meal or to their home. Hey, hope you enjoyed Flew Laborg. What a good guy. Love that he never stopped being himself, that he kind of embraced his inner weirdness and allowed his unusualness to be his strength, to be his special sauce. And I love that he's found really good mentors. In fact, even better than mentors, angels like Conan O'Brien. And of course, who knew he was such a hoops fan? I love talking basketball with him. Could do that all day long. All right, listen, thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. We got a great episode for you every weekday. Be safe, be well. We'll see you on the other side. Hey, tune into the Carlos Watson Show. It's like no other. You're going to enjoy it every weekday on YouTube.